details for you. But you can grab my last pair of tickets this week. Two for Third Eye Blind next summer. Good luck. Car 10 216 578 or 800 348 1007. The Alan Cox Show. Sure, you could listen to another show, but then how would you find the puppies we've buried in boxes around the city? 100.7 WMMS. Well, at least we're not eating. More money for you here in a few minutes. Five or six. If I had to put a value on it. $1,000. 4.30 and 5.30, last two chances for you to win this week. And then we'll start back up Monday morning uh, with RMG. Cavaliers win against the Nets in Paris yesterday afternoon. Uh, upon their return, they'll hit the Romo Fijo on when, uh, sorry, Monday night, the MLK Day game, against the Chicago Bulls. 7 o'clock, right after we roll out, 6.30 is going to be your pregame coverage on uh, MMS and on the iHeartRadio app. If you listen to us from out of state, tell me where you do that. Matt is in Pittsburgh traffic listening to the show. Annie listens in Ogden, Utah. Patty is in Auburn, Washington. John listens in Sealy Lake, Montana. Uh, Spencer is in Alton, Illinois. That is St. Louis area. And Eric is a new listener in Emmitsburg, Iowa. So thank you one and all. It is not always easy to listen on the iHeartRadio app. You know, we like to brag that it's free. There's a good reason for that. We couldn't possibly charge for it. Uh, But that is uh, an easy way to listen. Are you okay? No. Oh, my God. Do you have what Mary has? I gave it to you. No, it's it's different. (laughs) (laughs) It's It's getting nasty outside. Did you go take a a jog out there? Is that what happened? Oh, okay. No, I've changed my plans because of the weather today. How bad is it there? I it's don't live just there. really windy, like 50 really windy mile an hour and winds. super rainy, just gross out. So we were going to go on a date tonight, but instead we're going to just stay in. You and the girl? Yeah. Where were you going to go? To get sushi. Oh. Spot in Lakewood? Or are you going to yeah, head out? Yeah, sushi, okay. Sushi spot in Lakewood, and instead we're going to just. Order. Will you order in? I'm going to order in, yeah. Mm hmm. I'll probably yeah. go and You'll pick it up. You'll send someone else out into the rain. No, I'm going to pick it up and bring it back to my place and then we'll eat it. Yeah. All right. The sushi, Alan. What? Oh, come on. We're saving ourselves. <laughs> For what? No. <laughs> saving later. ourselves. For after sushi. <laughs> after sushi. <laughs> probably do it actually before sushi. Okay. Oh, really? Well, yeah. yeah. See, that's the move. Sex yeah. and then dinner. Sex and then dinner. That's, yep. that's pro stuff right there. Mm-hmm. Of course. Nope. We we do that based on the food. Like if we're gonna get something light like sushi, Brian and I will be like, yeah, sushi's no not deal. light the way I do it. Oh, <laughs> oh really? You get <laughs> it all goopy. I just you... eat a lot. I, I like oh. a lot of sushi. And then, but if we're doing like Mexican, and I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna tempt the gods and get some queso. Then it's like we definitely have to have sex before this. Right. I just like Speaking. sushi. I, I like to eat sex and then eat because yeah. Like a little snack afterwards too. Also, I haven't seen her in like a week and a half, so we're ready to go. Good for you. Where's she been? She's just busy, and I'm busy. Hmm. Bill, you know you have to make time for each other. Yeah, we do. But uh, I mean, I had shows all weekend. She had her kid. I'm not. Too... Oh, she has a kid. Yeah. So you're being we're learning very... so much. Well, he's being very coy about this mm-hmm. one. He's playing this close to the vest, yeah. and so we're, we already, don't really. I've already said too much. We don't really <laughs> know anything. Okay, she got a kid. All right. Well, congratulations. Um. Well, let me give this money here. Right, I promised it to you. It's a thousand dollars, courtesy of the buzzard bookie. Still got plenty of chances to win some of this money. So if you strike out, don't sweat it. But I hope you win this. So good luck. This is your chance to bet with the Buzzard Bookie and win $1,000 now. Enter this nationwide keyword at WMMS.com. Money, that's money. Enter it now at WMMS.com. The, um, it didn't take long, and I don't think anyone is shocked that they just kind of uh, pop somebody up within the ranks, but the um, Patriots replace Bill Belichick with a guy named Gerard Mayo. This has been the plan all along. 
it was in Gerard Mayo's contract that he would be the successor. Oh, really? To Bill Belichick, from what I heard, from the reports I heard. So you got to be pretty good, or else the team doesn't think that Belichick is going to leave anytime soon. To put a clause like that in there. So is the conventional wisdom that the Patriots was just because of Tom Brady? I mean, no, the, I think the, it's a combination of the is two. It? I think it's the team was better than it is now. The team was better. Uh, I think there's also, I think the biggest thing is that Bill Belichick's talent assessment has waned. Okay. Because he's the guy, he wasn't just the coach, he was picking all the players they draft and stuff like that. And for a long time, he was making really good assessments, finding gems in late rounds. But over the past few years, I think in the past like five or six years, uh, they've not even re-signed anybody that they picked in the first couple rounds to a second contract. So I think that was a, a big problem with it. Well, Gerard Mayo has been with the Patriots His the whole time. Career, yeah. He played for them. and But wouldn't every guy who comes in want a clause in his contract that says if the coach retires, I'm the next coach? I mean, what's your leverage? Coach? What's your leverage to do something like that? I don't that? know. That I think that's just that's how highly he's regarded and how much faith that they have in him. And also, that's a tough act to follow. He is the most successful coach of all time. Yeah, he, he won six Super Bowls, and that's nothing to sneeze at. So it's going to be really hard to follow up that. So. If they go, hey, this is the guy we're going to bring in to be the successor to Bill Belichick. Either they look like geniuses because they got the right guy, or they go, eh, that didn't work out, and two seasons later they got somebody else. Or they say, we can't hold him to the same standard. Right. I mean. Because how could you? How could you? No. Well, they're going to hire a new GM, too, yeah. to work with. But Gerard Mayo is the youngest head coach in the NFL. He's a month younger than Sean McVay. Sean McVay had been holding that um, title. But 37, Gerard Mayo. 37. I guess I thought that there was a younger guy than that coaching in the NFL. Well, Sean McVay was younger when he started. There was a few coaches that were younger than that when they started, but they've gotten older now. Hmm. <laughs> they That's have? How, as things, as because things go. Because football ages you. I get Say, it. <laughs> Yeah, okay. Well, congratulations to him. Uh, he was a player for the Patriots, and now he is the head coach. And I know there's a lot of, uh, I think our own Rob Anthony, our, our boss here, our program director, is a Pats fan because he's from New England. I think he is. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. And I have friends from all over who are Patriots fans. Now, some of them are women. And even though they will deny it to their dying day, I've always told them, you only like the Patriots because of Tom Brady. And see, that puts you in a weird spot because if you've been trying to convince people that's not the case, you have to remain a Patriots fan even though Tom Brady leaves. You can't jump to the Buccaneers for a cup of coffee because you'll be outed as a Brady fan, not a Pats fan. But people stick with them. So uh, the uh, Gerard Mayo administration is underway there at uh, where they play, Gillette Stadium? Is that the Patriots' yes. home field? Yes, it is. Uh, Mike in Lorraine, hello. Hey, guys. Uh, Mayo was starting to get offers to be head coaches elsewhere. Oh, so that was the leverage. Hey, I want to stay here. Put this in my contract. Yes. Hello. That's. I think that's right because I think last last season he was. Yeah. There you go. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So in order for I'm sorry. So in order for them to keep him, it had to be. Hey, you're going to be our next head coach. Gotcha. All right. Well, yeah, sorry about the interruption. No, no, no that's, that's okay. okay. I, I thought that I lost you, but that's okay. Thank you, yeah. Mike. I appreciate it. There's Mike and Lorraine. I thought our equipment was. Uh... Not working, and we were going to have to leave early. I think it's oh, – oh, oh, no, my mic's not working. Oh, no, 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 I can't what she said. Uh, I uh, the trouble mm. is all of these technical difficulties are 100% believable. There's yeah. nothing shocking there at all. Right, so, that's why we could get away with it. I'll tell you what they tell me. You just got to play through it. <laughs> Who said that? Nobody's ever said that. Um – 
Belichick was responsible for Tom Brady, Ben says. Okay, well, I'm not uh, learned enough to know whether or not that's true. But I do, a lot of people were posting really old video of Nick Saban and Belichick when they were both with the Browns. Yeah. That's pretty wild, too. Well, Belichick was the head coach, and I think uh, Saban was the defensive coordinator, and that staff that Belichick had, they've made a documentary about how a bunch of those guys went on to be pretty successful head coaches. Big deal, yeah. Yeah, all stemming from Cleveland. Mm Mm-hmm. Alan, Trucker John, King of I-71. That was on TikTok this morning. In the 10 most white trash cities, Ohio has two out of 10. Toledo and Dayton. Yeah. Just thought that would be a little fun fact for you. (laughs) That is fun. Guys take care of each other. Trucker John out. How do you determine a white trash city? I don't know. What are the metrics for that? The most white trash cities? The amount of Mountain Dew consumed? I wonder what state has the most white trash cities per capita. What kind of per capita? Uh, but Yeah, but what I'm saying is <laughs> most of the country is white trash cities. Mm-hmm. I mean, most states are rural areas. So Right, but that's why he's saying cities. Like a, a but what's Indiana. the cutoff? I mean, Lima, Ohio is a city. What's the, what's the population? Mm, well, that's what I'm wondering. 50,000 and over, because Dayton probably has, what, 60,000 people? Oh, it's bigger than that. 100,000, maybe? Yeah, probably. Dayton, it's 137,000 people. And then Toledo, what? Probably similar. Yeah, Toledo is 270,000 oh, people. Oh, I thought Dayton was bigger than Toledo. No, Toledo's wow. bigger than Dayton. Dayton is wow. not Because Toledo's they a mini Detroit. <laughs> That's why I'm surprised. Well, Dayton's kind trash. of a glorified college town, right? Not really. I was it's say, not? I thought besides, w- without the college, I don't think Dayton would be. Well, they have an Air like Force downtown. base or something? The Air Force base is yeah. bigger same, than anything. There. It's the same thing with Akron. Akron is not a college town. There happens to be a college there, but Akron is not known for the University of Akron. No, but what else would be there if it wasn't there? I mean, you got, Tires. The, you got the Akron Zoo. <laughs> yep, the rubber. The Akron Zoo. No, every <laughs> town city has a zoo. If the University of Akron wasn't there, what would Akron be known for? Goodyear? Dude, you could walk through the Goodyear Akron Zoo. and Firestone. Eight minutes. Goodyear, Firestone. <laughs> um, I mean, obviously LeBron James. LeBron James. Um, yeah. Black Keys. Yeah. yeah a, a music scene. You want me to blow your mind? Akron's bigger than Dayton. I knew that. Wow. I didn't know that. I thought Akron was like 35,000 people. The metro of Cleveland is the biggest in Ohio. So I just figured. I, I, I mean, I knew because Akron itself is big, and then you got all the little suburbs of Akron. Huh. What is an Akron suburb? Like a Barberton. Oh, I um, see. Wadsworth. Um, <laughs> Bill, he said Wad. Wad. Did you hear him say Wad? How much yeah, a Wadsworth? Wadsworth? Man, how much is well, Wadsworth? a Wadsworth? I don't think Wadsworth. Wadsworth's Medina County. Okay. I'll take I'd your word for Bath. that. Well, would you say Avon? Avon is Lorain County. Is Avon a suburb of Cleveland? Yes. Okay. So, I mean, to, okay. to his point. I just, I knew a lot of people that went to Wadsworth. Ac- <laughs> that were from Wadsworth <laughs> that went to Akron. Akron. Okay. Or, or like Fair Canton enough. and Green. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You're green. <clears throat> so your mom wouldn't let you go to Ohio State because she went there she partied mm-hmm. and didn't want you to do what she did. And waste the money, yeah. Right. So it was like a do as I say, not as I did so type of thing. other school where you can still party. But, but it's it was, closer, it closer to and home. cheaper. Yeah. So what did your mom, who paid for your mom's college? Um, I don't know. I think she I think she grew up poor and she probably got some type of scholarship. I'm not sure. Some type of scholarship. She never told you. Um, I she didn't finish at OSU. She went to nursing school after that. How how many years at Ohio State did she do? I think she did two. What did she think she wanted to do, or did she not know? Um, yo, she did, we did have this discussion. She wanted to do like photography. I think she minored in photography when she was in school, um, but I don't know if she saw like a career in that. So she. Well, yeah, that's not even something you really. Your need mom's to go not to a photographer now. Hmm. Your mom's not a photographer now? She doesn't even do it as a hobby anymore. She's not a medical she, photographer? She, she did it in college. I mean, my older daughter, you know, people talk about wasting money at college. Uh, my older daughter is halfway through her sophomore year, and 
one of her closest friends still doesn't know what she wants to do. And I'm like, you got to figure that out or you got to leave and do something else, I guess. I, 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 I mean, if she's a kid of means, like if she's parent, not. Oh, well, then. Well, it goes the other way, too. Rich kids can waste time. Poor kids can waste time because they get a lot of assistance. Like, I knew a lot of kids that went to school, did not graduate, but got to go pretty much for free. Well, why? but that's finite. I mean, but why, though? Like, why go to college because you wanna, if you're going to F off the whole time? Because you want to party. I knew a lot of kids. But you that, can do that without going to college. You can go to college parties without go, paying for class. They, some of them come from small towns, and they don't have that the same opportunity. It, for me, college was more than just education. I could have gone. A lot of people in my school went to LC, LC3, Lorain County Community College. So if I just wanted an education, I could have just gone there. I needed to get out of Oberlin. Oberlin was far too small. I didn't have. If only they a had a college of, near there. I wasn't smart enough. We've been over this. I wasn't smart <laughs> enough to get into Oberlin College. I just like to hear you say it. I I already know that. I didn't get a. 30 on my ACT, um, but they, uh, like, going to Akron was just an opportunity. That was the biggest city at the time that I had ever lived in, so it was essentially- You didn't think uh, about going to CSU? Um, no, because, again, it was the radio station. I actually did want to cater it to something that I might want to do, so I didn't know of CSU's radio station. I knew of 88.1 because I listened to it on my way to school in Oberlin. You might go to Baldwin-Wallace. I don't think I was smart enough to get into that one either. Oh, you got to be smart to get in there? Yeah, that's a very prestigious school. Baldwin Wallace? Yes. They, okay. It's a liberal arts school. I they, mean, I don't know anything about it. They compete it, but with I didn't know. Oberlin. They compete with Oberlin uh, with the, their conservatory because there's Oberlin College Conservatory and then there's Baldwin Wallace Conservatory. And Baldwin I know, Wallace I has rivals. a 79% acceptance rate. That is not an elite school. Okay. Well, I know I didn't I didn't consider it. But they have what well, my point is they have a radio station. I understand, but yeah. I didn't know of that I, the 88.1 was Akron's best recruiting tool for me because I listened to that on the dial on my way to school in the morning gotcha. when I drove. So that is why I went. Hmm. But OSU, obviously, I wanted to go because I knew of OSU long before I was watching football games. My mom went there, and I and she would tell me stories. She's like, I lived in, uh, I think it was called Lincoln Tower or whatever, right next to the football field, and you know they threw ragers there. I, you know, I, I don't mean to bust your balls, and maybe I'm the ignorant one here. Is it common, and I'm asking everyone, is it common for parents to tell the kid where they're going to go? She didn't tell me where to go. She told me where well, she well, was not, not going to go. To pay, where, she told me what she wasn't going to pay for. That's the difference. When you have someone co-sign your loans, I mean. She said, I'm not paying for Ohio State. Correct. Gotcha. Yeah, and she, she didn't tell me anything further than that. Like, And you never I, thought about going out of state. I didn't want to go out of state. I didn't gotcha. think I didn't think it was that serious because I didn't know what it was going. I mean, I guess that would have been more anyway. Probably would have been more, and yeah. I didn't. I, again, I was going for broadcasting. I'm sure there's quality broadcasting schools here. I thought about going to the Ohio at the time. It was Ohio Center for Broadcasting, um, and Mom was like, "You can do that and try it." I'm like, "Well, I kind of want the college experience, and also yeah, you're some better off done. doing that." Well, anyway, uh, we really got a circuitous route away from Trucker John's call. I I, I don't know how they determine what white trash cities are um, in Ohio or any other state. But he said that Dayton and Toledo were on it. So anyway, if you are one of our bureau chiefs in Dayton and Toledo, you hold your head high. Don't you let anyone tell you what you are. I don't even know. He saw it on TikTok. You know what else I saw on TikTok? Somebody doing the cinnamon challenge. So it's not exactly a hotbed of geniuses over there either. Wait, they're still doing that? That was around when I was a kid. No, yeah, making the rounds again. Is Everything that, old is new again. Is that what cake. I think it is? They're like swallowing a bunch of uh, cinnamon? Yeah, and then they cough and mm-hmm. some of them die and that's what you God, fingers yeah. crossed. Since but. I was in like ele- elementary school because they were, <laughs> they gave us, my teacher was that like. That was like one of the first <laughs> yeah, internet trends. That, I can't believe yeah. that. that. People are still doing that. <laughs> Because every time it comes back around, somebody thinks they're the first person to think of it. Oh, my gosh. Well, let them do it. I'm not going to stop anybody from doing it. We're a different generation. Yeah. Enjoy yourself. It's like the choking thing. Or like the... What? The choking game. Yeah, choking game. That We did that in middle school, and then it became a thing again 10 years later, and then 10 years after that. Happened a bunch of times. A whole new generation mm-hmm. of kids who want to deprive their brain of oxygen. Yep. I'm going to break here if you want to send me a text.